Well, welcome to Rob's Fix-It Shop. Uh, I've got something interesting on the bench today. It's an Apple IIe computer, and um, it's not working. I bought it broken because I thought it would be fun to kind of figure it out and fix it. And uh, I'm 59 years old, and so I remember when these first showed up, and uh, it was pretty exciting. We got one in our computer uh, lab in high school, and... I spent just a ton of time playing around with it and doing a lot of basic program. But at the time, of course, I never understood how the circuit board works or any of that. Uh, I never did any assembly language programming. But, um, but that led to a career in software engineering. And I've done a lot of different things, but one of them is embedded uh, development. So I use a lot of uh, systems that are like this, a lot more powerful, obviously. but. Uh, but I think I can understand it a lot better now, so maybe I can get it up and running. I don't know. Uh, it should be a, kind of fun to find out either way, figure out what's wrong with it if I can. And uh, so if you're interested, hang on. It should be a fun ride. So here I have it open on the bench, and it looks like it's got uh, the 80 column card, I think. A looks like a uh, serial card. A mouse interface. Wow, that's pretty fancy. And uh, let's see, what's this other board? Oh, disk drive. Obviously a disk drive. And um, yeah, I don't know anything about these. So I'm going to get a monitor. And I think just S-Video should be able to come out of it. And we'll try that. All right, let's see what happens when we plug it in. Power on. Nothing. What? <laughs> hmm. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that's an interesting, uh, that's interesting. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take out all these cards and try again. So I've got all the boards out and I still have a screen that has these bars showing up and uh, I've got a USB to S video uh, converter hooked up and that's why you can see it on the screen here. And so, yeah, so I'm going to have to take it out of the case and investigate further and figure out what's going on here. <clears throat> all right, so we got it out of its case. Yeah, that was very easy to do. Um, yeah, I would... I don't hear a beep. And I thought I was supposed to hear a beep. If it's working at all, right? If it's, if it's loading from ROM. So, it, you know, it has its... Kind of feels like... So the video looks scro screwed up. And so that's this section over here. Uh, but we're not hearing a beep, so it's not even booting. Unless the beep's not working. Okay, so I'm just kind of messing around with it, turning it on and off. And sometimes I get this pattern like this, and other times I get the vertical bars. Um, it doesn't seem to make much difference. I was kind of messing with the 80 column cards. Didn't make a difference. And the thing to remember about this machine is that it uh, is running at the clock of 2 megahertz, and it's kind of time slicing between 
the video using the memory and the processor using the memory. And they just go back and forth every other clock cycle reading the memory. And um, so we should be able to start up and see stuff on the screen, whatever the memory, memory is initialized to. But, um, but clearly we're not hearing the beep, so we're not, we're not booting at all. Yep, and here we see the, the vertical bars again. So uh, we're going to have to dig a little deeper. So it looks like we've got uh, our, our memory address is here. And um, split between these two buffers. And then you come into the memory manager unit. And then there's an 8-bit bus coming into each of these 1-bit chips and then you see the 1-bit then coming out here. So we should be able to see if we connect on here we should be able to see the addressing happening. But first let's just see if the signals coming into these memory chips look like decent signals. Okay, let's see if our bus signals look at all reasonable. And then if they do, then we can move on. All right, so that's address line one or zero. That's one. They look about the same. And two is going to be and six, so two looks good. And then three is going to be pin twelve. That one looks good. And 11. And then 10. Yeah, 10 doesn't look good. What's so 10 is address 5. So 9. So address line 5 is hosed up. And then let's go to 6. Six is thirteen nine ten. That one looks all right, and last one is nine. So it looks like. It looks like if we look at address line 5 again, which is 10, it's all screwed up. It's this weird um, I don't know what it is. I can't really yeah, that's it. not looking great. That's what a good one looks like. The bad one looks like. Um, hmm, interesting. I wonder. Wonder where to start here. I guess I could pull out those chips and see if uh, pull out the memory chips and see if that problem goes away. Yeah, let me try that. All right, so I pulled the first the first chip and we're still kind of screwed up there. So 
So let me just keep pulling them in and out. Or pulling them out. Yikes. Hmm. Okay. Chip two out. Same thing. Now it looks good. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, let me try putting a, a let me just confirm that that's what happened. So I plugged the chip in. And we get a bad signal. Or different signal than the others. Unplug it. Oh no, that looks bad. That looks good. That's what it should look like. That's what it does look like. Okay, well I'm going to keep pulling chips. Okay, so we pulled out all the memory chips and we're still getting a bad signal. Okay, so I think I'm going to look at so it's RA2. <laughs> okay, so it's address 5, but it's RA2. And that is pin 8 on the MMU. So. So if we go to pin. So it should be. In six, okay, so that looks good. Six, that's address line zero, one, two, three. Four, five, six. So I must have. Hold on, I gotta check that. I think I've got this backwards. Okay, so let's see again. So where we're having the problem should be pin 10. No, that's good. Oh, well, I'll be back. Okay, so I think I've got what I need here. <clears throat> so the one that was failing was A5, address line 5, which is RA2, the address line, line 2, which should be pin 8 on the MMU. So if I go 8, I get my bad signal, and on either side of it, I should have good signals. Yes. Okay. So, I wonder what would happen if I were to pull this chip and then bend. See, the thing is, is that that bus line goes everywhere, right? So it could be anything. <laughs> um. Hmm. Well, I should probably look at these address lines. You wouldn't think an address line would go through here and affect this. 
But um, I'll check these, make sure they're right. Or they're, they look consistent. <clears throat> Pin two is a zero. What? No. Hmm. Well, that's weird. I don't get it. We're not seeing anything on the address lines. The address lines coming off the... Let me write those down. Okay, so here we have our address lines on the CPU. Let's see if we've got anything there. Nothing. What? <laughs> okay, wait, let me try again. Okay, so pin nine, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, nothing. Ten, nothing. Nothing. So our, let's look at pin 40. Pin 40 is our reset. Or it's our not reset. So if it's a low, we should be in reset. Okay, so it's five volts, so we're not. And then I wasn't seeing what was messing up that line there, but um, I thought I'd take a different approach. And uh, on the memory controller, I thought I'd look at the address lines and um, take a look at what's. I'm hooking right to the address lines of the CPU. And I thought I'd just take a look and see what uh, is coming out of there. And I'm hooked to the, let's see. So I've got this Pico scope here and um, borrowed that from work. And uh, so I've got these hooked up. There did the data lines. And uh, let's see, I got to find out what the clock is. So it looks like we've got 16 address. Uh, yeah, 16 address lines. I'm going to look at 0 through 8. Then I'm also going to look at the clock, which I think is 37. All right, let me hook that up. Okay, so here I've got my PicoScope hooked up. I've got the data lines 0 through 7. And um, uh, here I've got the clock right here. So if I run, I see my clock running, right? The machine's on right now. The clock's running. But um, let's uh, look at hit reset, it's really it's strange what's happening. So if I hit uh, control reset, nothing. And then, oh, that time it does work, right? So now we're see, it's starting to see a bunch of um, addresses come over, but then it quits, right? So it went for a while, then it quit. And um, here, let me hit it again. So it's weird because sometimes it'll come to life. Reset, reset, whoops, what? Reset, comes to life, runs for a while, stops. Just for a second. All 
And sometimes it'll run for a while. Yeah, see, I'm not... Come on. There, see, oh, there it ran for longer. So he, he, powering it off has the same effect, right? So if I power off, no clock. That time, nothing. Oh, and when I shut it off, then it started coming back. So let's stop it. And uh, so here I'm seeing seeing the data. Let's see if I can see it go from. Let's see. Let me try it again. That's not what I want. Okay, so... So it looks like here's where we started up. Whoops. Here's where we were not running. Here's where we started to run. Wait a minute, let me see if I can. Yeah. Here's where we started to run. I don't know what's going on here. Um, one thing I do know is that the first thing we should see is, here it says in um, uh, just Jim Sather book on the Apple IIe, he says that when the machine first comes out of reset, the um, the first thing that happens is you read ROM at FC and FD, and then um, and then that loads the uh, the reset vector, right? And then it starts running from there. So and and that is FH. So when you read FC and FD, you should return FA62, right? So we should see, because I'm looking at the lower eight bits, we should see FC and FD in here. I don't see that anywhere. I don't know. I could have... Here's an FC, FC. Yeah, I don't see any FC, FD. All right, so, all right, so we've been seeing that I'm hooked right up to my process, to my lower address lines here. And um, when I restart, it will run for a little bit sometimes. Sometimes it won't run at all. Uh, the, it seems like the processor is not running at all, and which doesn't make any sense to me, right? Uh, why the processor shouldn't be running. I often, I've looked at the reset line, which is this pin right here, and the reset line seems to be working just fine, and I do tend to get a clock coming to it. Uh, we can see that uh, right, right here. Here we see our clock, our clock running, and the clock runs very consistently, um, even when the processor doesn't start and nothing asserts itself on those address lines and so um, and so I messed around with a lot of stuff and so if we look um, I tried kind of removing these buffers these two here are the buffers that are um, allowing data on the data lines in and out of reads and writes they're buffering it in and out of the chip I took those out 
to see if those were maybe shorted or something and in, in causing uh, this to not come up did not do anything but then I pulled this chip out this ROM chip right here which is the CD ROM and uh, and now it starts every single time and here let me show you <clears throat> So here I am running, I'm going to power it off, see it stop, on, comes up right away, off, on, and here's reset, reset, release. So we're coming up every time, so, um, so I really think it's probably that that ROM is bad. I don't know. So I started looking around and I thought, well, I should, could probably buy a ROM and, um, and program it or buy a pre-programmed ROM. And um, I was looking around and this is what I found. So this is a reactive micro website and um, they've got for $25 they've got an Apple IIe enhancement kit, right? And so when the first Apple II came out, or Apple IIe came out in 1983, um, it came out with one set of firmware, but then later it came out with the 6502C or 65C02, I don't know, processor and a new set of firmware that would make it more compatible with the Apple III. And um, I read all about it right here. Where'd it go? No. Uh, so yeah, I've, so this is Jim Sather's book, uh, Understanding the Apple IIe. And uh, here it tells all about uh, Apple releasing the Apple IIe, and then at the time this book was written, it, it still hadn't released that, but um, here it talks about the Apple IIe firmware upgrade and uh, and goes into some details about what, what that includes, uh, but a lot of it is compatibility with the uh, Apple III. Anyway, so... Yep, so I looked at that, and so then, so this enhancement kit actually has uh, the three different ROM chips, so it has the one that I know is bad, and I suspect that that video one's bad too, by the way, the video's acting, although I'm not sure. I mean, when I get this, it could still act bad, but it's also got a processor to, um, uh, to work with that, and so... 25 bucks, which I thought was pretty cheap, right? And uh, so for me to buy some chips and buy a programmer, look up all the stuff, that would be kind of fun and interesting. And um, I'm not one to shy away from wasting my time. But uh, so I ordered this. And so let's see if that, uh, if that works, right? I don't know. I mean, I... I think it's probably other thing. There might be other things wrong too, but um, you know, because earlier we saw that like one of the lines to the memory wasn't looking great. But I think if we get this, we'll get over this hump of the processor not coming up with that bad ROM chip. And I'm just guessing it's a ROM badge, bad ROM chip. So I don't know. I'll wait till this comes in, and then I'll uh, take up the video again, and we'll see if it makes a big difference. All right. Well, I'm back. Actually. A month has passed since I uh, was last working on this, but last time I was here, we found that this uh, EEPROM, number one, this thing is off here, but the, the EEPROM, I think is bad because it wouldn't turn on properly. And so uh, I'm gonna try to fix this thing here, but I got a, um, a set an upgrade to the prom and the processor 
and uh, yeah, that the, turns this Apple IIe into an enhanced Apple IIe. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix this little connector here, and then here are the chips. All right, so there's our processor, uh, video, CD, EF. And so let me, let me fix this and then I'll come back and we'll get these other things plugged in. All right, so let's start replacing the chips. We've got our pin one is here. And let's see the Figure out how to get this guy out of here. Okay, and now the processor. All right, that was easy. Now, so I got one, two, three, four. I got the chips in there. And um, okay, so let me set it up so I can see the video. All right, so let's flip it on. Yeah, that doesn't look so good. It's different. Yeah, so we're still getting garbage on the screen. Um, I'm going to, uh, that seems to be scanning differently, but I don't know. Um, I'm going to try switching out the memory, see if that makes a difference. Okay, well, I don't think this will make any difference, but I just put new memory in here. Okay, well, it's different. <laughs> Wow. Well, look at this. <laughs> all, all I did, so um, I put the new memory in and uh, it still wasn't working so i pulled this uh iou chip out and um just put it back in and now wow
sweet. So let me. Uh, Oof, this keyboard is terrible. Uh, print. Not exactly what I expected. Uh, I can't even remember how to stop a program. Um, control C. Okay, that worked. Oh. Okay. That might work better. Wow. Okay, so um, cool. Okay, so I'm going to run the self test, and I think if I hold these two buttons down and hit reset, no. Well, reset doesn't seem to work. Huh. Okay, well, let me try powering on with these two buttons. What? <laughs> That's a, okay. System okay. I guess that wasn't ex quite what I expected to see. Okay, I'm going to try plugging in the 80 column card. Let's see what happens there. Okay, so that's our card right here. Let's flip it on. Okay, so I've got the 80 column card in, but it doesn't seem like we have 80 columns. I don't know what's going on with that. Try shutting it off and reseeding it. I mean, there isn't that much to it. Okay, so here we have, uh, I hooked up the floppy drive and um, seems to work. It's only got one floppy disk in it. I have no idea what it, it looks like it's a subscription and then every month you would get a new set of software but it looks pretty sketchy oh April Fool special Side D. <laughs> I don't know. Do I flip it over? Yeah, it's a two-sided disc. Let me see if that works. And I think it's funny here that it, you hit return for OK and escape for cancel. Um, no. OK, so that's not going to work. Uh, but then, yeah, I don't quite understand what's on that floppy disk. But let me show you this. Okay, so I uh, I got myself one of these um, floppy emus. It's pretty nice, right? It just emulates a floppy drive. 
and uh, uh, right now I have it just set to a blank disk so um, like that but you can like there's a SD card here you can put all kinds of disk images on there and um, and it's got a really nice menu that shows you how to I mean that lets you select which disk you want to boot on it's super nice it wasn't that expensive either and um, so I have it just it's kind of emulating that drive so here let me hit reset and now we're we've booted from that floppy and uh, the catalog there's one a little program I wrote there but here let me uh, so so that's kind of cool right so if I write a program uh, And then uh, control C and I can save it so it's actually saving it onto that SD card right now which is very cool uh, yeah so then there's two programs on there so yeah, so that's pretty cool. It gives you the ability to kind of, without messing with floppy drives. And, and uh, I just went online. I found just a, a ton of old uh, pieces of software <laughs> for the Apple II. Way too many. And there's um, some uh, assemblers, which I, I, I would like to try out or whatever. Um, but yeah, let's because uh, that's one thing that's cool about this is you can... Um, go right into assembly or you can write machine code and uh, I don't know so here let me just uh, and so this is coming back to me a little bit um, it took me a little bit to kind of remember all the stuff because like I said it was over 30 years ago um, but uh, let's just write, write ourselves a little program clear the old one uh, Create ourselves three variables. God dang it. <laughs> I am not at all used to this keyboard. Uh, equal, equal zero. Equal zero. We'll see if I can get this. Um, so I'm just okay. And so then let's say four a to equal zero to six point two a two. Whoops. Point. To step point one, and so I think that's the command. Okay, so H plot. So we want to go from uh, X comma Y. Okay, uh, two. Um, the cosine of a. Okay, so I want x y to be my center of the screen. So I got to change that uh, times. Let's say fifty and sine of a times 50 
Oops. Fifty. Plus x sine of a times fifty plus y. And then let oh I let's uh go to, let's go into a to column mode because. It's a little bit fancy, right? So I think that's pretty close, right? So then 80 next A, and then 40, no wait, 40 X equals 100, 50 Y equals 100 not really the center of the screen but good enough for now um, and then uh, there's one more thing I have to do oh yeah, yeah, yeah let's go 35 we'll go into high resolution graphics okay so let's see what <laughs> okay let's run it Oh, I know it. Okay, I got it. I got it. Uh, no, it already ran. Um, what? Okay. What? How do I get into text mode? I thought it was text. Yeah, yeah, it is. Okay. So we also need 36 H color equals three, I guess. And then now let's start running it. Oh, fancy. <laughs> so, and then let's uh, go back into text mode. That's weird how it takes a second to kind of come around. Anyways, so then I can save it. Uh, let's call it flower. Well, I think that's it for Rob's fix it shop on this Apple IIe computer. Uh, I just wanted to kind of mess around with it, see if I could get it working. And I did, kind of a little bit brute force, but that's okay. Um, it seems to work great now. Uh, but one thing I, I really recognize now is just how brilliant a machine this is. Not only the way the graphics are laid out and how the graphics work on it, but just in general, uh, just what a, a well-made and well-designed and just it's an, for its time it is an in engineering marvel. And, uh, and not only that, but the... Uh, the programming on it is brilliant, right? I'm able to do all kinds of stuff on here that uh, is just very cool. I mean, the idea that that basic is the operating system almost, right? That that the commands in basic are kind of integrated with the operating system. I remember as a kid how important that was, just because I could. I could understand that, right? I've got these things that the computer will do. I can give them lines and set up, make up a recipe to have them done, right? And so it's just a very cool machine. And um, I think I'm going to do more videos on it, maybe, or maybe I'll just have fun kind of messing around with the machine programming of it. Because, you know, this is no modern processor. You can go anywhere in the memory and do anything, right? And, uh, and that's very cool, right? I haven't seen that uh, for a long, long time. So, um, but yeah, well, I hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, I think that's it for this, this one. So if you like it, please hit like and subscribe. And thanks for watching.